All right, hi. Uh, so we finally get Effie versus Yabo. Hi, sorry, content. Um, I had planned on recording this, and they took like a fucking month. But this is the finals of a uh, shout out slurms, I imagine. Um, this is the finals of Are You Ladder Tour? Uh, Yabo versus Flame Victini. Generally speaking, I tend to like Effie's teams, so I thought this would be a pretty interesting show. Uh, and what we got was this. Uh, so I'll get to the moves later, but Effie looks like he brought a pretty interesting, I guess, the topical build. Uh, it's got the Sneasel, presumably Pursuit, that generally pairs well with these kind of uh, soft defensive teams. Uh, I would say the most uh, noteworthy point here is that it is pretty darn fight weak. Gallade is not a fight, a real fight resist. I guess it's more fair to say. Uh, Jellicent, especially in the case of this particular team, which uh, sports two fighters, including Sock, which just shreds with a knockoff. It could be Colbert, but personally, I think that in the echelon of what Jellicent wants to check. Usually fighters are kind of low down, though for a team like this, maybe it is actually running Colber. Uh, but yeah, it is generally a pretty straightforward looking team. Uh, Weavile is going to be, your Sneasel is going to be Pursuit. The Scavalier, I could see being the uh, Rest Talk SD set. I can't imagine it being anything else because usually the other sets would be utilizing Pursuit. And that's just kind of redundancy here, so... Uh, SD is actually quite good. It offers a uh, balance-oriented Malamar check because Malamar is just kind of back-breaking for a lot of balances. Uh, it's a pretty much Venusaur counter. Uh, almost none are running fire coverage nowadays, so it is pretty safe to come in on anything. The only thing that it worries about to an extent is knockoff, which is great, but uh, it's a good set. It's something that actually presses the red steel forces it to get its item removed which is something that like an animal really doesn't most times and i'm really glad this game get hand but yeah i'm expecting that to be that uh galley uh it could be sd it could be sub bulk up i don't know jellison's down though because um that's really bad because he has no real fighting resists left that should be Jolly Flygon, which sort of helps him, at least in RK, you know, once they close combat, they're at risk. But, uh, he goes... Oh, wow, sub, that's interesting. Let's just see the first turn to the game, though, because, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so he led Sock on a Jellicent, not wanting to risk anything like a Colber. He goes to a Bone Snow as Effie doubles Diancy. Uh, he returns to Bone Snow knowing that, generally speaking... But F is the common Diancy variant, especially on a team like this, it makes sense. Uh, so it can eat one and KO back, and he would have that necessity to do that there. So he just goes for the Diamond Storm, Weezing comes in, they change hazards, toxic spikes go up. <coughs> As FV brings in that, and uh, Wisps on the Bone Snow over predicts. I guess he thought a HP Fire was coming, but eh, that's generally not that common. And then he brings in the Escavalier here, and we're seeing the sub, which is interesting. As I said before, I would have thought that this would be uh, Rest Talk, which is hmm, more resilient. I think it would fit a kind of team like this a little more, but it could be Sub SD, which is uh, unique for being... Uh, <laughs> Just by the merit of being tanky and strong, like it's plus two Maghorn shreds through the uh, pseudo resists that people put on teams like uh, Alan Lula to handle teams like this. So he could be that in tandem with Drill Run, which breaks down a lot of defensive backbones nowadays. Uh, things that rely on the conservative wind conditions being a little bit slower in their boosting and this does it a little more aggressively it really presses the issue in a way that is kind of unique to it i used a uh, similar set with protect over sword stance which is what i'm 
just going to be basing my assumptions off right now because he has not given us very much information off this. Uh, let's see, I think Focus Blood did around yeah, 40, which is indicative of about max HP. I wouldn't say anything more than that. Uh, but yeah, Gallade. Especially, this is gonna, it's not gonna be Swarm. I mean, it might be Swarm, but I really doubt it. But, uh, Drain Punch would be, uh, indicative of a sub bulk upset, especially with Leftovers Recovery, and it doesn't quite KO, which is to be expected, honestly. Uh, Gallade with max HP is going to be eating at least one, even if Adamant Escavalier is strong as fuck. I can only imagine. Hmm. I mean, Drain Punch won't KO, so I see no reason for Yago not to just knock off here. Even though it seems silly having, you know, no real fight resist, quote unquote, being able to uh, just remove the leftovers of any potential switch ins from FD if he decides to go for it, which doesn't seem unreasonable. He can go in on the uh, Oopsie or whatever, but yeah, he just decides to make the trade. And we do show Drill Run, so I can only imagine that the last move was Sword Stance. I'll try to confirm later. Maybe, or I won't, you know, whatever. But it goes down, and at this point, we're in an interesting position. Samurai, if it's SD, uh, which is definitely a possibility, I feel like there's a bit of redundancy if this is a AOA special attacker on this team. Sword Stance might be nice. Uh, has some potential here, because it's uh, bulky to the point of being able to trade with something like a Sneasel, you know, eat a knockoff, and presumably get down to uh, torrent range in doing so. But uh, if, assuming he plays this right, it shouldn't ever get out of hand because whatever it plays into will just get weakened by the attack to the point where the Flygon can RK with Earthquake. And that brings us to the point of how he is going to go about breaking down we or wheezing oopsie. This is something that bleh, sub bulk up galley can potentially do if given a free turn, but I'm not sure how he would get that conceded to him unless well, he can directly do it play into wheezing, especially if it's a psychic stab over knockoff, which I personally prefer. But we'll see. Ooh, he goes right into the Flygon. I don't know if I agree with that play. I feel like all he'll be doing with the Escavalier is sneaking it in on the Oopsie's Stealth Rocks and probably living it. I think it's bulky enough to eat an uninvested Psy Shot. Uh, I don't know. And I shouldn't be checking. Why are they all Finch? I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> But, um, he just goes for the SD, wow. Uh, and Earthquake doing 44, so that might be a roll. I'm not sure what other people are running on their, uh, fast, defensive, defog Flygon, which is, I guess, the primary set, but, ooh, that is not enough. Uh, so, that goes down. Sneasel goes immediately in reflecting that it is going to be an Ice Shard variant. I don't think that Ice Shard is absolutely necessary on all teams, but it is definitely useful on enough of them. Uh, some of the time, if your team isn't that heavily offensive, I can justify like a, uh, a Low Kick or even an Iron Tail over Ice Shard, but he does choose to make use of that Escavalier sack right there, goes into it on the close combat. What he can do here is go right back into the Sneasel and click Icicle Crash because I'm assuming that's Bandit from just the uh, lack of Life Orb Recoil and Eolite Sneasel not really being a set right now. I don't think it's got that much value to it because its primary niche is being this kind of fast beater dash pursuiter teams, and ooh, it does show Lumberry, so that is a bulky SD variant. Uh, it's a little harder to justify on teams, in my experiences, because uh, what it essentially is, is a very niche hybrid of Verizion and Metacham being 
both a bulky conservative or bulky ish cons conservative ish booster such a, uh, as Verzion is without the speed and being strong or not as strong as Medicham but as you can see right here it is doing putting in work it does have some significant upsides to it and I guess he's running jolly because that sock is slower but um <laughs> that that is nice I didn't honestly it's that only comic well I guess you know given how susceptible is the image, which is something that Gali does play to a lot. I think that the psychic stab in conjunction with being pretty bulky and type neutral to a lot of uh, key things makes it somewhat of an anti metagame type pick right now. So, first game goes to Flaming Victini, and uh, we will see you for the next game in just a second. Alright, and we're back, and ooh. <laughs> All right, uh, so we've got a Jinx, and is he going chicken pass here? Is that what this is? That's a... Uh... Now, I am no hobophobe, but that is fucking gay. So... I'm interested to see where this goes, but, uh... He is sporting Mega Audino Doug Trio, which I'm a big fan of, actually. Uh... I built a team that does enjoy that quite a bit. Oh, sorry, that's. I should really be getting out of Skype. Very unprofessional. At least for, you know, solo recordings. Uh, but if you're subscribed to me for formality, then uh, feel free to unsub. I mean, I appreciate what you do here, but. You're not. You're gonna be missing out on some good shit. But, um. What I would assume this is here is hmm, potentially it could be standard support, but I'm leaning more towards a uh, Crodino set here, which is interesting uh, because oh oh wait yeah I guess he's going hard in with the uh, chicken pass concept. I was gonna give a little tirade, tirade on. Crodino, but I think I'll skip then, because that's all we're doing here, so hopefully he doesn't get this off, because I don't want this to be the last game played, honestly. Uh, that being said, it's an interesting concept. Looks like he has... I think that it's built properly. Uh, arguably... I think he could have stood for a little bit better handle on ice types. He kind of relies on them just not being able to counterplay the combuskin. The combuskin. Combuskin. I swear I don't generally even talk like this. It's just. I guess that's what a live recording does to a person. Ugh. So. Hmm. Anyway, I guess if I'm going to say anything, Mr. Mime is an interesting Pokemon here. I mean, it's got a nice speed tier, uh, and I would say what's significant to it is that it does have soundproof, which, especially in the case of teams like this, is good for uh, Explode, because otherwise it would click Boom Burst and things would just drop against a team like this. Uh, Doug Trio is not strong enough to... It readily trap that. It also has Healing Wish, which I don't see him getting a lot of value on it out of from a team like this, but what do I know? Anywho, uh... Yavo is doing decently well to avoid conceding free turns to the... Compaskin, because should it get its way, you know, sub up get a few speed boosts under its wings, go to Zatu, he could be in trouble because his means of eliminating teams like that, or threats such as that, are Sneasel, which would be slower at that point, presumably die to a coverage move, I'd figure either Heat Wave or Gasling Gleam, we don't know, and working off that, but Diancy shows Calm Mind, so still there on Calm Mind. I guess it's 
feasible because again people's handle on conservative boosters nowadays is definitely tough though what I think would be happening here is just for Yabo to be pressing the issue for enough time to get the powder off, go to Doug Trio and trap it. So, we'll see if that goes on, but alright, he just does, he's trying to keep the odd, I'm not entirely sure how to identify win conditions here, um, at this point. I would have to say that Yabo's best, 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 best method of winning would be, oh, he's going for the Doug Tree here, which, uh, it makes enough sense. I think Ardino, this Ardino at least, would be showing Healing Wish if it has it, that or Knock Off, because, uh, if it gets knocked off, then, oh, it can Encore as well, um... I guess if we turn to Zatu, which doesn't really mean much here, unfortunately. I think, I mean, he's Yabo wouldn't have to would have to avoid. Oh, all right, so he does Young Wish. Uh, so there goes that. I think what would be happening here is oh, he's going for it. Um. I think that's pretty reasonable, honestly. With screens up, he should be able to hmm. sub. I don't think he would be able to sub, honestly. That's not quite good enough because bulk or er, Blastoise is considerably strong for a bulky water. At least it's not that powerful. But its skulls are going to be doing more than the, I guess, standard of the tier in fucking Almuel, whose skulls hit for piss poor damage, but uh, yeah, the Zatu's in, and as I said, this is a problem for Yabo. I think that he's going to, yeah, end up trying to fish for the skull burn, but really, otherwise, I don't think he has much of a response here. Uh, Sneasel's going to be looking to throw an ice shard and RK it, but in order to do that, he's going to need to get that skull burn, press that chip damage in such a way that he is forced below a certain line of HP. Uh, so I think there's no other play for him really, because otherwise it's just Mr. Mime hoping for a crit, uh, Oopsie doesn't do anything, Doug Trio is just gonna get popped off at this point, as is Venusaur. Uh, does Storm Power kill at this point? I would have to calc, honestly, not that familiar with it. I think he would need one more Calm Mind under his belt, but I can't say for certain. Uh, although, I think that Ice Shard from Sneasel Presumably CB, maybe Life Orb as well would KO, though he's going for Calm Mind still. He's very confident he won't get crit, which I'd be a little more dubious on, but what do I know? Anywho, he does get the burn there, so that should mean that he is safe to RK it to some extent, though it won't be a clean break at all. He's probably going to be forced to sack at least one Mon. Here. Uh, and yeah, he's just he just confident he will not get crit, but um, it's working out. So yeah, jeez, I, I I don't agree with this line of play at all. Like this is it's adding too much RNG into the equation here. I I can't advocate this line of play at all because yeah, there we go, it happened. I. Yeah, I can't even say that I'm really upset about that. That's just, well, oh, well, I'm not upset, especially because game three, more content. But, um, yeah, you should try in pretty much every situation to minimize RNG as much as possible because uh, it will fuck you over. And that is one such example of it. Because... 
once you get into those, well, yeah, that's all it is. When you get into a cycle like that, wherein you're just recovering into attacks, it's sort of an inevitability. But I digress. That is presumably banded. Uh, it wouldn't need a choice ban to KO Mr. Mime from 40%, but uh, Sash Doug Trio is piss, so... If it doesn't show life orb recoil, then it is probably banded, which I think is a good set. I think that people give it a lot of flack, and I don't see why. The only real thing is that it doesn't sub, and it can potentially offer counterplay, but most of the teams that are running Choice Band Doug Trio, or Doug Trio generally, will be these kind of balances that have a solid defensive backbone with which to... Uh, Maybe not this one. This one's a little looser, but it gets away with it, I'd say. Uh, but a solid defensive backbone that supports it. And that is a neat double. Don't think... Oh, nice. Toxic. That's a unique one. Uh, and yeah, I guess within the realms of that banded deck trio, there is some deviation. You can use a lot of different shit. Uh, some of it will be, uh, you can use Pursuit, which is mostly just a tool to isolate Hoopa, though occasionally once you show that, you know, like, you're strong, you can use Stone Edge. Oh, it's not, though. Dang. Dang. That, I'm not sure what that would target exactly. Um, because Endure is... Yeah, what does that target exactly? Hmm. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, that is bad for Yabo because Doug Trier just sort of ran train on FE at this point. So, he's kind of stuck in a weird situation. Uh... Obviously, he still has advantage, but at this point, a speed past Vrizion can do a lot of work. Yeah, that's... I mean, I guess it ensures that the fucking move get Memento gets off, but really, I don't think that that's, like, enough net value to justify that particular choice, but... Hmm. What do I know? Let's see what we got here. So this is the exact situation I was theorizing about. Uh, clearly, if he goes for this route, he is going to pass off to Vrizion. I Yeah. He, oh, that didn't break this time? Is that a roll prior to this? God. Um, notwithstanding... I think that Oopsie still has a decent shot of this. He could, well, actually, I didn't consider the possibility of passing to Diancian, which is definitely a real one. If he showed Calm Mind, uh, does he have rest? I don't know if he has rest, but... Ugh. Yeah, I can definitely go into it here. He would be risking a few components, for sure. I. Especially again, if and if he doesn't have that rest to ensure that his chip can get just washed away, then nothing much will come of it. But I don't know, it could be an angle. This is definitely an unorthodox team, and usually with these kind of teams, you gotta make some pretty specific techs, such as Stealth Rock, Calm Mind, Diancy. So it's all too possible. Uh, I said, hmm. Either he's taking his time and that's not the case, and I'm just lagging, and that's shitty, uh, or he doesn't have it. Wait, no, no, but why though? Wait, but, but why though? All right, let's see if I can justify that play. Um, 
I guess he was assuming for a... I, I mean, I guess a... Yeah, skeleton to Vrizion. Wouldn't break this up. Honestly, I think it still would. Just given the prior damage. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know why he paid it. He showed Toxic before. Yeah, he used Toxic already. Um, but... I guess we'll see now if it's rest. I can only imagine it's not, just because, like, yeah, it, having ancient powers your only attack is very dubious for multiple reasons. Um, though at this point, I think that he might have, uh, Venusaur doesn't take a hit, but, Ooh, actually, this could be a game because Oopsie is still toxic, so. Actually, no, Comic Skin is. I forgot how dead Comic Skin is. Whoopsies. Uh. Oh, huh. So. I think he would go Oopsie, take one hit. Psy shock back for some <coughs> chip damage. Oh, sack his other dude. Or sack his other dudes as need be, and then end game sneeze them. <coughs> oh, because uh, Comskin would have to pull off like double protect to end this game, or dodge and ice compress if this is banded. So. This should go to Yabo if RNG is beautiful and fair, just like life is all the time, and that took it way better than I would have thought. But, um. But I'm a goddamn idiot, so I don't know anything. Uh. I guess Uxie just U turns here then. And, yeah, I always underestimate Uxie for some reason. I guess it's because a lot of the time you'll be seeing a faster spread via uh, max HP, 20 defense, and lower 236 speed. Sorry. That's probably the most important tidbit, and I just sort of skimped on it. But, whatevs, dog. Ugh. And it just do that. Do <laughs> yeah, that was Pokemon. And that was Pokemon. Yeah, it's Pokemon. But I don't think yeah, this wouldn't be Yachi. There's absolutely no reason for it. So crits for no reason. And he's banded. Nice. I like banded. Yeah. Wait, are, is he seriously Sash? Oh, that's if it is that's shitty gross whatever um notwithstanding we got a game three everyone yeah yeah i'm excited for it i hope you are too i'm gonna you know, pause the video because not pause pause the video all right game three let's go um i think this is a team that he's used quite a bit now so i guess he's uh fed up as it will as it were, as it was. Um, so x offense, or x balance, rather. Uh, this is, I think, a Megalix era team that he liked enough to just opt out for regular Lix for, which is not as good, clearly. Uh, it's heavy slams aren't doing nearly enough. It's not as much of a knock absorber as it was, but it's still okay. It's fulfilling a distinct role on teams. Uh, well, let's see. Yapo's team looks interesting here. I can only imagine. The main thing is, at least for, I guess, FV and the rest of the audience, is distinguishing which is which here. Either Registeel is the Rocker or Seismitoden is, is, and the other one would be either Subtox or uh, a set that UU players like that I think is fucking atrocious, but they use it on in this tier is... Uh, 
sub power up punch seismitoad, which I mean it capitalizes on the presence of Almola, sure, but so do a bunch of good sets like Subtoxic, but I digress. <coughs> anyway, Registeel throws out Stealth Rocks as he goes right for the knockoff, which is good. There's no Alamola. It's not going to be getting anything, so item removal here and now is really good for it. It can potentially set up... Actually, you fucking Cloud to just go in. I don't know why he allowed that to happen right off the bat. That's... Because, yeah, every time he just comes in on, like, Weezing or a potentially defensive Flygon, it just boom bursts and things are dropping right now. Uh, whereas Stealth Rock is very easy to get defogged away. I don't agree with that play. Out of the gate. But... Uh, so, he goes to Weezing as he goes to Steelix, and Weezing is a little annoying here, obviously. Um, Wisp users in general are really good right now because there aren't that many cohesive switch-ins for balance. They're usually just like, okay, I'll go to my bulky water or whatever, and I'll eventually come out on top via Scalding. So... It's nice. Weezing is cool right now. Is what I'm just getting at with that. Um, Seismitoad comes in, and if it's gonna sub, this is the time it's gonna do it, and that can be potentially threatening, but it is not. Um, it does show Earthquake though, which might indicate that set, I think, more than anything. Golbat's a nice. Actually, yeah, I didn't acknowledge it, but Golbat is a nice switch in for it either which way because it can infiltrate or toxic the seismitoad and suppress it pretty quickly. It gets the defog here. It's not threatened by ice punch, so it can pretty safely do it. Uh oh yeah, and there's Lamas also complaining about the set. So oh, okay, I don't agree with sub rocks, but yeah. Not with standing. I'm trying to look at to see what exactly he'll be doing here. Uh, Del Fox is threatening at first, but the issue with it is that it is very pursuit susceptible, which is the primary issue with why it <coughs> I maybe won't use it. It's like why I have reser reservations about building a, I guess, official Verzion balance. I think that if a team is going to be built in such a way that it's weak to a prominent threat like that, you should have a dug tree in the back all the time. So, in the end, if you're bringing a Verzion, it's just going to cause a trade that usually maybe will favor the defensive player, but not necessarily. Um, but whatever. Whatever. Anyway. Registeel is trying to play into that gold band. That's why I'm saying that this knockoff is so shitty for it. Like, it's no longer winning this exchange. Golbat can just sort of sit in on it as long as it wants. And even if Brave Bird is doing a pittance, it doesn't matter because that damage is there to stay. He doesn't have the turn per turn recovery to make anything of it. And this could be at worst T-Wave for it. And that's not even that big a deal here because Golbat doesn't need it speed for shit. It would just be like maybe getting dicked by a full pair as it as Toad goes in, which, eh, I'm not a big fan of it. <coughs> anyway, he sneaks the Delphox in here. Uh, Effie has a initial switch in the Slow King, but he doubles nicely to Seismitoad. I think that, yeah, again, he can just go to Golbat, and unless he Ice Punches on the switch, there's no real pressure. Actually... Yeah, there isn't even really that much there either way because it doesn't do it KO. Yeah, that does goddamn nothing. And you're slower, so it can't even EQ on the roost here. Uh, yeah, I don't know what he was really expecting there. I guess he's just not calcing shit, and he's not that familiar with the metagame, which is lame. Because uh, you should know your calcs. At least, you know, generally speaking. Otherwise... You're just clicking buttons and hoping that it works out. Uh, 
But he's going for the game here. Or not the game, at least the weakening of Golbat. Because eventually that might lead to something here. That being said, this has to be toxic. Yeah, there we go. Um, <coughs> so, nice power punch for that 2% chip. I have no idea why you made that play. Like, this is, this is silly. Um, but Weezing gets back in, can just go to whatever. He chooses Explode, which is meaning a kill. I mean, like I said, it Explode is bulky enough so that it can capitalize on these kind of like semi-passive walls and just come in and nuke a thing. It'll take a little damage in doing so, but really it doesn't matter that much to it. And yeah, Registeel at 51, I it may be able to take, but I don't think it's going to uh, make much of it. So yeah, that's his one time in. And yeah, that entire sequence has cost gold bat the what 20 per, or 25 percent i guess 25 it shows 29 right there 30 percent 30 net percent i'm insane yeah but um yeah he just gets to defog there's no real pressure on him to do anything else i don't think uh oh but he just go for it uh that's Probably fine. If this Sneasel wants to go for a pursuit, that's all well and good. I think that if he can just go to Steelix though here, and even if it does get knocked off, it okay. I I feel like Yabo should be getting aggressive with his plays right here because he's definitely on the back foot. Uh, and while knockoff isn't that huge, I feel like it'll at least put him like a head over enough to uh, set up something dude I mean come on bro but if he wants to bring in the slow king here that's fine yeah uh, I wouldn't have brought in x -Plaid myself either there just because it's presumably coming in on attack uh, wisp would be completely ridiculous to assume for there it wouldn't gain anything versus anything if he really wanted to go for it, he could have probably stayed in with flakes but it wouldn't have accomplished anything so it would have been whatever uh so yeah uh he brings in seismitoad again this is probably gonna throw an ice punch once more there's very little reason for him not to slow king isn't in any position to be predicting that it would just put him on the back foot for whatever and I think you could get away with going hard for Rizion if you really want it. It's not that big a deal. It's HP isn't that value in this, valuable in this matchup. It shouldn't be sweeping so just putting it into directly pressure you know scare it off if you want so you can double into explode afterwards on the predicted <coughs> wheezing and collect his red steel kill but mm, maybe that's wishful thinking i i feel like that is a pretty reasonable line to play though though he does double i don't i don't know what he gained from that going into wheezing that just yeah oh he's going for that well all right that's decent um it's a little shitty he had to bring it in on Stealth Rock, but that was a decent bait. So we're going to see here is a Pursuit knockoff 50-50 quote-unquote. Uh, it definitely favors FB to switch out, but he instead goes for the Scald here. And does he get the burn to reward himself for it? Nope, but that definitely reflects fucking... CB damage, which is good for him, bad for, well, it's whatever at this point, um, he's gonna get one, probably, I mean, you know, he can defog, but generally speaking, I can't see him getting more than one window to 
go for a pursuit against this Slowking, which generally won't implicate him that much, I don't think, unless this is Scarf Delphox, which can potentially put in work in games, in spite of the fact that this is a much bulkier team, it would be very threatening once this Slowking is gone. Golbat would be able to roost into it just about that. <coughs> and that's just about it. Alright, uh, he does go into Virgion there, acknowledging that it's very low value. It shows Life Orb, which can only, I can only imagine means it's Calm Mind, uh, Lum, or Life Orb SD. Virgion is way too chancy for my liking. Uh, yeah, I don't think that it would. I don't think that it would. I would just get Arcade and just Del Fox, etc. I think it was his right play to uh, play the Virizion loosely. He can get away with just throwing a Focus Blast here if he wants, or he can, okay, kick train, that's fine. Doesn't really matter that much because Weezing is not doing anything that gainful with its free turns. Why is that a surprise? Of course it's special, it showed Life Orb. There you go, at least, yeah, there we go. Ugh, <sighs> hate noobs, man. But, uh... If Yavo wants to, I, I think that it behooves FV just to attack into this active region. It doesn't really do much, and him trying to <coughs> ugh, get fancy with anything is, okay, I guess he disagreed. He's bringing in the Yipsploud, and he's getting his KO. It's going to be Rich Steel, I can only imagine, because everything else is way more valuable. So, um, yeah, there shouldn't be much thought to that. That's the trade I'm seeing, thinking what would go on from there on in. Uh, Flygon would need some attack investment for EQ to KO here, I think. Pretty confident. Well, oh, but he's special. Uh, special, I feel like, gets put to the wayside quite a lot because... It's something, Flygon's something that inherently has a lot of defensive value on these kind of teams, and running it in an offensive <coughs> capacity isn't super great, especially when it's not that strong anyway. It's, you know, hitting, what, 259 special attack? It's not that strong. But he made the double there on fucking Weezing, so dang, he's getting a lot of value out of this explode. That's a nice play. I am going to acknowledge that. Uh Ooh, the fuck cancel thing. There we go. Um So Delphox and Seismitoad are both bulky enough to take one hit should they wanna go for that angle, and I think that Seismitoad is probably the best switch in overall here. It's the one that has the least value um <coughs> but he instead decides to we, I don't agree with that at all I, is he, does he think that Toad is gonna make a push I don't think that that's realistic at all uh because yeah this is going to do 30 yeah um and it just sits in roosts and it is thereafter arcade by either of the faster Pokemon. It can't afford to get a sub up in this kind of environment, uh, so yeah, I don't agree at all with second wheezing in lieu of that. But he's gonna go for it. Uh, I think that Effie is pretty free to just, you know, sit in on this. He doesn't need the Golbat super badly for anything else, so we'll just let this pan out, I guess. Uh, if Yavo wants, I think he should just take the Sneasel switch here and uh, try to make something work, but I'm not sure what can be done. Maybe, 
maybe a Colbert Del Fox can pull it out, but I don't expect Colbert Del Fox. It's kind of an iffy set. It's, uh, it could work. It could work, but for the most part, shaky Pokemon at best. Uh, that said, he just sacks Explod here. Um, well, he should sack Explod here. There's, it's now slower than everything and is at 18%, so. If he wants to be a man, he can pursue it, but no, why would he do that? Why do you not sack? Right. Um, yeah, that's a dubious play. He just sort of wasted his Steelix's item, and this uh, it's not necessarily valuable here, but, um, Odd. And I don't know why he didn't go for a Brave Bird there, because everything was hit by a Brave Bird there. And if Flygon stayed into DM, then who cares? Ugh, whatever. I mean, this is showing off how nice Golbat can be in practice, which is pretty dope. And that's Leftovers Delphox, so I guess it's Sub Call Mind, which is also said I don't like it all it's um I think part of Del Fox's utility in this metagame now is that it is both faster than Jolly Flygon which is a common check to these kind of middling speed tier strong attackers things like uh Houndoom Drapion etc are all you know at least soft porch or soft 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 checked goodness gracious by that <coughs> whereas Del Fox is not it's 104 base speed and it's only getting arcade by like the Sneasel the Aerodactyl is also a mildly common pursuiter dash revenge killer for these kind of teams <laughs> he's taking this <sighs> yeah, you know, but, um, yeah, Sneeza comes in and it RKs via, I mean, he doesn't have to pursue knockoff, also is going to kill, but yeah, why not avoid any kind of shenanigans, because... Uh, yeah, he has no fire resist left now. Which is a flaw of this team, something that Sneeze or takes advantage of, and something that would be great to have something in the tier that capitalizes on. You know, like a, a over base 100, non pursuit weak dude. But I digress. That's that's just me wishfully thinking. Um, so at this point. Yeah, I'd say Steelix comes in, sets up Stealth Rock, and just forces the Flygon to kill it. At which point, the game is over. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am wrong. Uh, so, oh, just goes for the Heavy Slam. I don't know if that's the right play because in my situation you just set up stuff so I can yeah now he's now he's because the only thing that Yabo has to pull out this game is Sneasel and if he keeps giving free turns to Sneasel then things can get bad that's why you set up Stealth Rock force them down and then <coughs> go into your own Sneasel after oh well that so, eh, I don't think a 2 it kid is regardless, but yeah, you're just supposed to. Ugh. If you set up Stealth Rock previously, then Flygon would at one point or another be forced to just Earth Power kill you. At which point you go to your own Sneasel, you click Ice Move, and something drops. I would imagine Seismitoad. He has to go into his own Sneasel to risk the speed tie. You sack something, go from there, and it's just heavily favoring you to make that sequence rather than doing what you're doing right now and I mean uh, uh, um but 
it's whatever. I he keeps toxicing too. That's also suboptimal. If he goes for roost and whatever, it's totally fine. You don't lose anything there. But if you <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well. Hey, what? Okay. Now he just takes the hit and KOs you and Ice Shards with Weevil, or his own Sneasel for the game. I mean, it's cool that you predicted a thing, even though I would have thought that going Verzion to minimize any hacks would be the more appropriate sequence. Uh, now he risks things, but he got away with it. I don't know, maybe this is coming from the dude that just assumes for hacks I don't want to be like that guy, but I I feel like this is pretty basic mix risk minimization. Notwithstanding, he pulled it off, so who can complain? Don't know why he's not going to sneeze, let's just click knock off, but sure. Uh, that's the game, and it was definitely an interesting one, or games interesting Pokemon good uh, so congratulations to FV uh, as well as Yabo for making a nice run e don't take what I say super seriously you know take it with a grain of salt etc 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 but uh, I don't know I feel like there was definitely some misplays that didn't get capitalized on here notwithstanding I liked it I hope you liked it I hope that uh, you don't unsubscribe, actually, from call back from that other thing I said, because I'm a poor man, and I, I need to feed my family. I don't know, though. I hope that uh, you like, comment, and subscribe, and also say something nice on Chimpak's next video. Alright, bye everyone.